All right, you might have to deal with some wind in this video because these trees grow in horrible places. That's what makes them really interesting. So my first tree is the white bark pine. And these trees have a lot of interesting stuff going on with them. Uh, they're easy to figure out where they are because if you're in the Sierra and you're up a tree line and you're at the highest, highest trees, you're going to see these trees. They're the last trees you're going to see a tree line, white bark pines. And high up a tree line, they're going to be all gnarled like this. They grow in harsh environments. They like cold weather. And these are all stunted and weathered. They kind of look a little bit like bristlecone pines in that way. They don't grow faster or large. This dwarfing effect you're seeing on these trees is called the Krumholtz effect. Uh, I, on this mountain, there's some unusually large specimens. We're on the south side of... Uh, Mount Ralston, there's some 60 foot trees with uh, very large trunks, which is kind of unusual. So there must be some good growing conditions down lower. So uh, what's cool about these trees is the way their seeds are dispersed. It's very unusual. Uh, the needles come in these little clusters. These are the, the male, male cones. They're very sappy. And if you pull out a one of the pine bundles. You'll see they come in bundles of five, so that's a good way to ID them. The other really good way to ID these is these cones. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of purplish. Later in the in the spring, they're really purple, but and it's full of sap. You can see sap on my hand probably. Uh, these never open. They turn, kind of turn brown later on in the in the year, but. Uh, the only dispersal method for these trees is a bird called the Clark's Nutcracker. And it's kind of a fascinating symbiotic relationship that those two have. So these don't even come off the tree. They grow right at the very tops. I don't know if you can see, they grow right at the tops. Probably a design to attract the birds. So the birds take these cones and break them open as the fall comes they're a little easier to get inside. And a Clark's Nutcracker will typically, typically gather about 100 seeds. They keep them in a pouch under their tongue. And they bury them. Uh, there's been studies that show a Clark's Nutcracker care, will bury 80,000 seeds in a season. And they dig them up uh, throughout the winter to survive. So Clark's Nutcrackers can't survive without these trees. And these trees can't survive without the Clark's Nutcrackers. Now they usually bury them in bundles of 3 to 20. And it's amazing, these birds will bury 80,000 seeds and they'll find a great deal of them. But the ones they don't find, a lot of them, if the conditions are right, they will sprout into trees. So you'll typically see these trees, I don't know if you can see behind me, they're, they're in groupings. That's because of the Clark's Nutcracker, the way they bury them. So, if you aren't a sound sleeper and you're a backpacker, uh, you probably don't want to sleep around these trees, first of all, because it's harsher conditions. But these birds make a lot of noise. They squawk, they get up really early, but I find them very, very interesting. I'll have a picture posted here in this video. You see what they look like. So pretty fascinating. Now, these trees, unfortunately, have another story behind them where they're very close to being listed as an endangered species. And there's several reasons for that. Uh, I might take some heat for this, but they're going to be one of the first trees listed as endangered because of climate change. They like it cold. So these trees grow up, they usually grow up between nine to 12,000 feet, depending on exposure, whether you're on a north facing slope or a, a south facing slope. Uh, I'm on a south facing slope right now and we're at 9,400 feet. So they're the only trees that are growing up here. You'll sometimes see lodgepoles or red firs around these trees, but that's all that's up here. Uh, so what's happening is it's getting warmer and there's drought conditions a, a lot out here in the west. So with less water, warmer weather, uh, they're, a lot of them are dying off. 80% of the trees uh, of the white bark pines in, in Yellowstone National Park are dead right now. And they think a lot of it has to do with warmer temperatures. So, uh, 
A couple of other conditions have come up and Yosemite has some magnificent stands all along the John Muir Trail. There's any of the high mountains have great stands of, of uh, white bark pine. But there's a couple of pests. What happens when the trees get stressed? They become more vulnerable to pests being able to, the way that a tree, especially conifers, repel pests is they push out sap. And the trees get weak, uh, they can't defend themselves as well. And these trees don't grow very fast up at these conditions. There's a short growing season. Uh, like this small tree right here could be a couple hundred years old. I'm not gonna cut it down to find out though, but there's a mountain pine beetle in Yosemite that is getting to a lot of these. And they have found this white pine blister rust. It's an Asian pest. In 2010, they found those on, they found it on Mount Gibbs and Mount Hoffman in Yosemite National Park. So that's a bad one. And with all those combinations against them, uh, a lot of climate scientists and biologists are predicting these trees have like 120 to 180 years left before they possibly could become extinct in in the world so kind of sad but pretty pretty awesome tree so if you're ever up on a peak or any high elevation look for the white bark pines magnificent trees and they grow in magnificent country so hope you enjoyed the video more to come thanks